James is going to be doing a review and I'm going to be weighing my tomato harvest. That's just um, my my day. My one, this is one day in the peat field. In the water. Yeah, you washed them off then. I did. <laughs> in the peat yeah. field room. Yeah, at least it wasn't someone peeing on the tomatoes. So. No. They've been known well, to do that. Well, they probably did it. That's why I no, washed you got to wash them off early. You know, they're in the alley and yeah. some people just don't know uh, where borders and boundaries are, you know, like... Oh, they uh, just don't care. Uh, they're aggressive. They're aggressive. So they'll just yeah. do whatever Some of them are aggressive. Uh, dictator type, some of them are aggressive propagandists. Mm -hmm. uh, many are... Oh, it's both. interesting. Like, there's this one woman who, she's in the... Library a lot, and she'll be singing really loudly. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, she's just she's she doesn't care one about of the regulars. Else, she doesn't care about anyone else. And so they'll, you know, the computer desk women will come over and they'll say, "Well, you, know, you got to keep it down." Yeah, whatever, yeah. And, and of course really she, nice doesn't. Her, and she I, doesn't. This has been going on for days. And, right? <laughs> and they know her by name and the months. Yeah, exactly. And right. Anyway, and her so. common thing, she'll say. You can't do it. Tell me what to do. You can't tell me what to do. And then um, the security guard will come, and he'll be asking her nicely or whatever. Yeah. And then and then she'll say, "You're scaring me." And then she'll run away. And it's like she's not scared at all. She keeps coming back, and she's aggressive, and yeah, exactly. she's pretending right. that she is not. Yeah, exactly. A horrible. She's she has no. Uh, she thinks she's. She's got this idea of freedom, individual freedom that has nothing to do with individualism. But what it has to do with it is it, her imposing her uh, freedom, as it were, on everyone else. And that's not uh, what individualism is about. That's one thing that capitalists they understand, but they pretend not to. They say, "Oh, it's all about individualism. It's their individualism." imposing itself on other people. Uh, this is one way you can tell uh, people who uh, really believe in freedom. The faux gauches don't believe in it because uh, really uh, people who've got, uh, you know, who believe in freedom, uh, they're really careful about how they behave. Yes. Like I'm proud to say, when, when it comes to my behavior, I am pretty conservative. Like I, I don't use dope. I don't drink. I don't. I try not to swear, at least on camera. And uh, I was pretty good about it up until my back got so smashed up. Yeah. But um, you know, but you look at the folk oceans, What they want to crush is the way people talk and the way they think. They want to crush that. They don't believe in freedom at all. It's their freedom to to push people around. So a lot of them are uh, aggressive propagandists. So quite a few of them are aggressive dictators, and not not a few of them are um, both really a mixture, a horrible mixture. It's a disgusting mixture. Anyway, um, did you want to talk and? More no. about how much? Uh, I am wondering how many are in there. You should guess. One pound, seven point six ounces. Ah, oh, that's pretty good. Today. So that's like. Yeah. And that's just my my detail row along the side of the house. Yeah, yeah. That's just one row. Yeah. That's incredible. And I have some it's other things like, in my row. Uh, I have carrots. It's got to be like corn. two more than two dozen. I'm wondering if I'm going, well, if the weather holds, I might get more than a thousand. Well, we'll tomatoes. see. We'll do a harvest on your uh, yeah. tomatoes tomorrow, and we'll see how many we get. Yeah, exactly right. Some of them are There's looking some as beauties. though they needed attention maybe yeah. today, but the main yeah, attention they needed was watering. So, yes. uh, because it uh, warmed up today. Where are you figuring it might have got up to 28 today? Something like that. Something like that. It's supposed to get up to 28 tomorrow, so it's good you gave them the attention today, because uh, a couple of days like this in a row, and... Uh, well, they'd be really suffering. But I don't know if we'll have that many in James's um, garden yet. I don't. No, I think no. mine's going to be him they're because, well, he has the big varieties of tomatoes, so I they're still growing. They're ones. still green, and and I've got some when we harvest them, well, he's going to come in with a lot more poundage. Well, that's the thing, you know. That's one of the reasons why I believe. I don't know what Pauline thinks about uh, I, why I believe in planting a bunch of different varieties, yeah. then oh, you don't sure. get this huge uh, swamp of yeah. uh, stuff. 
well, to harvest when, yeah. the, when the when these the little orange ones up. were the first ones that I got and I got lots of them they're still coming and they're pretty steady but um, now I'm getting more of these these ones the green and red ones and uh, the round ones and the, the big long ones so um, and so you can see <laughs> the color of my and uh, the red ones they're they're very good they're I get a lot of them but and I only have one plant of those red ones and that's just it's just loaded all the time it's good but it I mean it's not as interesting looking they're just red <laughs> Anyway, and James is going to be eating strawberries. Right, so eating. that's a preview. I don't want to start launching this because these uh, books are kind of precious, even though yeah. uh, these books have been uh, used uh, pretty, I won't say severely, because you can see they're holding together, they're bound uh, pretty well, but uh, this is a preview. So this oh, is what... Oh, you haven't the, finished them yet. And so it's going to be what to tune into for tomorrow oh. or if you've got um, if you're a little bit uh, if you've got uh, low self-esteem or something like that if you're well if you've got a, a, a really fragile high self-esteem like if, you, if you're uh, uh, someone at university uh, who uh, doesn't like someone showing them up uh, okay don't. James but the thing is, is I don't put my videos up I know oh, I know I'm just uh, joking about it oh okay Okay. It'll be all, all along at the same, the same time. At the same time. So I understand that only too okay. well. It's just I'm using the, uh, you know, the format that they have on oh, radio or TV. But tune okay. in tomorrow for uh, yes, tune uh, something sort of stuff. But this will be like tune in a minute from now, or you might actually be tuning the actual review. And I don't know how you pull these things up. So I understand that only too well. Anyway, so I've been uh, threatening about this I, uh, for a little while. So I'm doing the same process I've done with other books. You know, I went through Creole, uh, the Creole New Testament. So it's a Creole from uh, Western Africa. Uh, using the same sort of process, just teaching myself the language. So it's based on English, so it's fairly easy to do. Dutch is not based on English, nor vice versa, but they're fairly closely related. Now, it's easier to teach yourself Dutch if you know German. So, uh, the guy taught me Anglo Saxon at university. I believe he was saying that that's how he, he lived in Holland for a while. You've actually visited his place at least once with Oh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, he told me he taught himself Dutch yes. uh, while well, living there, but initially it would be known as something about German. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, like I have the good fortune of uh, knowing him having studied Anglo-Saxon, having studied Middle English, and then, uh, you know, like having worked on uh, various Scandinavian languages, uh, and now it's gotten to the point where it's Norwegian, where I think I could read a newspaper with, I won't say some ease, but with uh, some efficacy. And, uh, you know, I've even looked at a bit of Icelandic, but, uh, and then looked at a bit of Afrikaans, actually. And a uh, very small amount of Flemish. And then, yeah, I've done yeah, a fair amount of German in the universe. I'm mainly concentrating on these languages, uh, with the exception of German and English, of course. I'm just reading this stuff. There's only so much. Even someone like I can. Someone with. Uh, we were talking about how patient I am with myself. Just uh, to keep on. Working at something. We were working at something. About how patient you are with me because mm -hmm. you know so much about English. Yeah, um, you're talking about the poetry, poetry and, and stuff. And and I, um, well, what I said. I, had, uh, I asked stupid questions and stuff. Not really. I, I mean, they're the same questions I asked, like uh, when I was. What? You don't make fun mm -hmm. of me. Because I never made fun of myself. It was uh, the same questions I asked. I remember asking of myself and uh, I was figuring it took me about 18 years to get to the point technically that you're at because I had to teach it myself I wasn't going to learn from the idiot who was teaching at university there was another guy who before this idiot Mart, as I call him Smarty Kitchenort who, who taught who would have been a bit more shall we, I, we say tolerant of what I was doing but I don't think I would have learned much about technique from him so, yeah, it took me a long time. Was it 18 years from, uh, I 
think I'm exaggerating from you know 1968 shall we say 67 to 85 86 really it would be uh, yeah 18 years so I like I try not to exaggerate you know when it comes to numbers or when it comes to anything else really if anything I underestimate but I underestimate but um, that's uh, pretty close to it I was working on 18 years just struggling way with rhythm and rhyme and well, picking up meanings of words and stuff like that, the, the, the advantage that you've got is you, most of the words you ask me about, you don't have to look up, because they just tell you, right? Mm -hmm. And those sort of things I just had to look up, going through books, writing, you know, I get a bookmark, every word that I didn't understand, I'd write on that bookmark, and then once that bookmark was done, and with Dickens, uh, this was like when I was 20, I started, you know, starting, you know, there were many bookmarks from Dickens. Then I put them away, and then I whipped through a dictionary. I didn't want to stop the reading process yeah. uh, to look the stuff up. I did stop it to write the stuff down. So, you know, I, I had different ways of dealing with things. So you don't... I love dictionaries. I love having them. But I love going through them, not you referring to them. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's a different sort of thing, because you waste so much time looking stuff up. It's the same sort of thing with the internet. I remember when I was taking German, uh, this is third level German, and I was mentioning this to Pauline. There was, a, we'd work the lab, or whatever they called it, tutorial, probably the lab, in the language lab, and we'd be going through the exercises, and there'd be, uh, there was, not would be, there was a dictionary available on the uh, site. That we're working, but the kids would all ask me, you know, like, what's this? What's this? Because it was faster. It was faster. Looking things up even on the on a computer is not as fast as actually knowing this stuff. So I'd rather have that data entered in my head. Okay. Well, that's just it. I mean, you really have to. There's you have to try to know as much as possible. Because then you go to sleep on yeah. whatever, on, yeah. and you wake up and and yeah. things just come to you. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, exactly right. So that's how to be really creative is memorize, memorize, memorize. Don't spend your all your time working. memorizing. Your brain's but doing uh, hard work yeah, work. even if you, if you spend all your waking time memorizing, if you well, almost all, <laughs> you just woke up. Your brain would have worked on some stuff. But yep. uh, it's better to be thinking about things a little bit. But memorize maybe half your time. Memorize stuff. Memorizing. Get that entered. So your brain is working over time. When you're asleep, it's working overtime. I don't think it's just when you're dreaming. I think maybe it's working when you're deep sleeping. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure it's working when you're dreaming. Just putting things together in different combos and so on and so forth. And then you'll wake up and, oh, okay. But sometimes you'll be having like waking dreams. You'll be thinking about something else. I can remember one of my favorite moments was um, doing, hey, this is at the old city hall here in Lethbridge. And I was one of the janitors there. At that point, I might have been the only one. And I was cleaning off the desks. In other words, uh, there'd be, they'd open up the windows, and there, there, the air conditioning wasn't adequate. And, geez, you'd have a, a Chinook wind, and there'd be there was a dusty parking lot to the southwest there, to the south of it. And you, it was just every day you'd have a load, a load of. Uh, dirt. It wasn't like dust on the window sills, but on the desk. So you'd be cleaning up the desk. Now, this was around Christmas time, so I don't think I was having to work as hard. People wouldn't open the windows up as much. It was just before Christmas time. And what I'd be doing is I'd be sitting thinking about things, trying to be creative. You know, like even when you're occupied with things that are automatic or relatively automatic, then your brain can be working more consciously. So I was sitting there I was just looking around, and I looked at, uh, I looked at the, I guess it's a lintel over the door, and I'm going, that's not the color, I'm like, that's not the color of mistletoe, because you ask most people, what's the color of mistletoe berries, and they say, right. yeah, I see, you know, you've observed, but most people will say red, right, but they're thinking of holly. Holly has oh, yes. the red stuff, and oftentimes the people put springs of holly around. 
uh, around Christmas time. It's more Christmassy color. So the white is a Christmas color. We tend to think of red and green. So Holly's got yes. that. So I was looking at it saying, that's not mistletoe. And then I'm going, it is. And I can remember, see, this is why you develop the memory. So when would have that been? It would have been uh, 1985 at the earliest. And it, well, I, th I think I, it could have been like 1995 or something like that at, at the latest, somewhere in that 10 year period. And I'm going, I can remember, it, w it would have been somewhere around 1978. So it could have been like 17 years before. They'd been talking, uh, I, I was taking a mythology course in the anthropology department out of the university, maybe 79, somewhere around there. And there was this one book on, we were taking on Norse myth, on Germanic myth, I think it was a Norse myth. And there was this one little detail that had stuck with me. It was about a, uh, a witch that would come down from a particular constellation, they didn't know which, on the world tree, Yggdrasil or whatever it's called, uh, which I, in Norse mythology was an ash tree, in Germanic mythology it would have, I think, have been an oak tree, and I suspect in English it was an oak tree as well. Ash tree, the world tree, connected the heavens to the earth, where the tree came out of the earth, and then the underworld, underneath the surface of the earth. And they didn't know, at least in this source, what, uh, the, what the constellation was. So the name of the constellation was, or the witch that came from the constellation was Mara, as in Night Mara, or Night Mare. So uh, the, the, really it's a, a nightmare, is this uh, kind of like a witch that comes down and haunts mankind. This is in Germanic mythology, not just in Norse mythology. That's why we've got it in English, nightmare. And uh, so I was going, I've figured out the constellation. Because you see that mistletoe, I knew the mistletoe was important in Norse mythology too. Uh, you know, I, I think I'd known it before I'd read it in the book. So it's what's used to bring on Ragnarok, the twilight of the gods. And how does that work out? There was a blind god amongst the Norse gods. I think his name was Hodor. And uh, Loki was the trickster god. It's not just in the Marvel comics. And uh, he, the gods would take turns sh uh, shooting and throwing various projectiles at, at uh, Baldur, the god of fertility. He was invulnerable. But like Achilles, or the Achilles heel, he had an Achilles heel. His vulnerability, not invulnerability, his vulnerability was mistletoe. So Loki goes to Hoder and says, hey, dude. He might have even said dude. It would probably be man. Hey, man. You know, M-A-N-N. -N. Well, that's in German. But uh, it would have been something like that. Hey, man. How come you ain't shooting or throwing... Uh, stuff at uh, Boulder, this god of fertility, nothing can hurt him. And Odor saying, "Hey, I'm blind, dude, or man. I I can't hit him anyway. So what's what's the point? It's no practice for me because I guess the gods were practicing when they were doing this." So Loki says, "Hey, have I got something for you? I got a bow here. He puts it in his hand, and I've made an arrow." a special arrow for you dude and i will guide your hands while you're aiming because i'll do the aiming for you and that's not us talking okay but uh, some things are really important i guess you know? anyway um so uh he he lines it up for Hoder and Hoder takes a shot and it hits Balder. Uh oh, what did Loki make the arrow of? Mistletoe. And the god of fertility dies and uh, that brings on Ragnarok, the twilight of the gods. What is that? Oh, it's not just the twilight for the gods, it's the twilight for everything and everyone, including human beings. 
So what happens is fire, flood, famine. Up in the north, it was uh, with the Norse gods, it was the Fimble winter, I think it was called. It was winter. At the killed off everything, but at the bottom of the tree, two infants survive. And that's those two infants, from those two infants, the world is regenerated again. At least human beings are regenerated again. It's an awesome story. You see, I knew, I knew what constellation that was. It's mistletoe. It's horrible. You see, but you see, Walder's the god of fertility, right? He's the god of fertility. And mistletoe is above fertility. What do people do? They kiss nowadays. They wouldn't have been kissing in olden times, I don't think, yeah. underneath mistletoe. They would have been going past third base, shall we say. Yes. So it's a something that's a survival of a fertility ritual. And uh, so it's about the, the uh, sterility. It's about uh, fertility and sterility. Now, what constellation does that apply to? Worldwide. And get that straight, you fogocious, and also you flunky, uh, stupid scientists that have been going around since the Enlightenment saying, hey, there was no flood. All the stories about there being stories around the world uh, about a flood, that's just a myth about a myth, or several myths, because Hey, you know, like uh, how a flood story got spread around certain places of the world. Missionaries did it. Hey, my parents were missionaries. They didn't convert a soul. And they were in Africa for Lord knows how long. Um, well, my dad was there, I don't know, let's say eight years, okay? It's hard to change people's beliefs and practices. They don't want to. You think they people to come along bum 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 you know we can't convert a soul but boy we're going to change the, they're going to get a flood myth out of what we say bum 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 yeah okay this is outside of the bible how did this happen you look in the legends of the zoos and any decent light even the downtown library here lethbridge used to have ginsburg's legends of the zoo jews and there are two that have to do with what we're talking about right now. One of them was the Pleiades. See, the Pleiades. See, this is the detail that I know something like a flood happened. And you're talking here, or I'm talking, but you're talking to an agnostic. Okay? Get that straight. Don't make a straw man out of me. Now, it's the Pleiades. When it's, it's, it's not in every flood myth because not everything survived. Not everything was... But when you get a story about the Pleiades, it's about uh, the flood or the end of the world. Get that straight. And I encourage you to check it up. Don't take it on trust. Check it up and check it up and check it up and check it up. Do as much checking as I've done and you'll become a learned person instead of a full gauche or whatever you are. Now, the... Uh, the, so the legends of the Jews one of them says oh that the doves of Noah the Pleiades oh what is that about the doves of Noah because it's one dove I think that he sent out but the doves of Noah there's it's like these little blue white uh, collection of stars six basically are visible it's not a very prominent constellation not at all it's not like neighboring Orion or something that, or it's not like the Big Dipper off it to the north. So, what's the other legend? Well, I mean, you can say it's a myth, or it's a legend, or whatever, but it's pretty straightforward. Once we get rid of God, or something like that, because I don't believe in a God. What it says is, the Pleiades is where God ripped a hole in the sky, and the water of the flood came through. And, you know, like, you look at Levi, Levi Strauss, or however they pronounce his name in French, or mispronounce it, it would be Levi Strauss in the, in the German. Have we got any time left? We'll just keep talking. You have lots. Okay, lots of time. Get ready.
Four get your notebooks out, folks. Or try to stuff it between your ears. So, I got a little long time ago. I've been interested in languages a long time. I've gotten better and better at learning them. I got hold of a what was advertised as a Bushman English Dictionary. And now it would be the days of Khoisan. And I'm the first thing I look up at in it is the Pleiades. Boom, boom, boom. This was in the 80s. Mid 80s. It cost me a lot of money to get that book. It was paperback and stuff like that. I'm proud of it. At any rate, boom, 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 Pleiades. Next entry. It's Pleiades and something more. And what's the entry in the English? A heavy rain. A rain that hardly ever, ever happens. There's a, a connection. Levi Strauss, I was mentioning. The raw and the cooked. You fogoshes love this sort of stuff, though he's a structuralist. You look at it and, oh, we're post-constructuralists. We, we kind of deconstruct stuff. But we got to read Levi Strauss. Yeah, we'll read him. And... Yeah, I deconstructed them a long time ago, and I don't go strutting around saying, I'm a deconstructionist. <laughs> okay? He's talking about the Amazon basin, and he finds a pattern there. And he's constructing this little pattern. He's saying, wow, you know, in the Amazon basin, the Pleiades, here we go, get your notebooks out. The Pleiades, get your pencils ready, sharpen them up. Sharpen up your minds, too. The Pleiades have to do with drought. And compare and contrast that with what happened in the Mediterranean. He's not talking about the legends of the, of the Jews. He's talking about Greece. What do the Pleiades mean? Something like the sailing ones. It's a Greek word. The sailing ones. Okay? It might be cognate with Plaviak. Plaviak in uh, Ukrainian or something like that. That means... Uh, sailor, Paviak. I knew a guy called that, and hopefully still around. Eugene, if you're still out there, hey buddy. But uh, the sailing ones, and he's saying, you know, the Pleiades in Greek legend and mythology is associated with rain. Wow! And he says, there's this opposition here, and what I was thinking right away was, hey you got to be careful with all oppositions because there's no such thing as a perfect opposition in the real world. There's no such thing as a perfect antinomy, uh, 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 um, antonyms. There's no such thing. So what he didn't realize is the Pleiades are have to do with drought and with rain. What are they really? They're a faucet. Faucets have to do with turning stuff on and turning stuff off again. That's what they are. So, yeah, I deconstructed his little structure that he'd set up here. He didn't understand. He, he didn't hadn't read enough mythology around the world, enough legend. Or if he had, he wasn't able to apply it. So that, now we've got South America. We've thrown in Greece. We've got Southwest Asia, right? So now we've got three continents. And, you know, like, uh, I'm saying, A, Ragnarok, Pleiades, Norse stuff, that's Northern Europe. So we got Europe doubled up. We've got Africa with the Khoisan, Bushmen, whatever you want to or not want to call them. Uh, can we... Uh, I'm making a prediction. You'll be able to find that in Australia. But uh, we're going to leave that, and I'll make a prediction. You'll be able to find that in North America. No, I don't have to make that prediction. Now, this is not a connection with the flood, necessarily. But uh, 